us in prayer. Father, we thank you for receiving our sacrifice of worship this evening. Thank you for the grace to fast and to pray. We ask that your word will come to us tonight in a mighty way. Let our lives never remain the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. This is our season of overflow. Somebody say my season of overflow. Somebody say my season of overflow. And I want to show you one of the credentials to enjoy overflow. One thing I'm assured tonight is that every one of us will be candidate of overflow. To be overflow in our finances, to be overflow in our spiritual lives, to be overflow in, of glory upon our lives, to be overflow of testimonies in our families, to be overflow of joy in our lives, to be overflow of wisdom in our lives, to be overflow of grace in our lives, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God has prepared the table before your enemies. But now, for your cup to run over, it is your business. The table is already prepared. But for what? For what? For your cup to run over is what? It is your business. Means, everything you ever need is already in God. What you do with your life is what matters. You didn't get what I'm saying? He prepares a table before me in the presence of my what? enemies. My cup running over. But why do you make your cup to run over? The, by you lying down in green pastures. What are the pastures? The word of God. Living according to the dictates of the word. Living according to what the word of God has said. And that's why I'm believing God today. Whatever it will take for you to experience overflow, God will put that body in your heart today. Whatever it will take for you to experience overflow, God will give you that understanding today. God will open that realm to you in Jesus' name. So I want to minister today on overflow through prophetic instructions. Celebrate the word of God. Somebody say overflow through prophetic instructions. Hallelujah. Okay. First Kings 17 verse 9 to 16. First Kings chapter 17 verse 9 to 16. We have to be pretty fast. First Kings chapter 17 verse 9 to 16. Somebody say overflow through prophetic instructions. Amen. I am believing God today that somebody, God, you will receive the grace to, to, to abide by kingdom instructions. And as you receive that grace and begin to live by kingdom instructions, I see you experiencing overflows. You are not getting what I'm saying. I see you experiencing overflows. In Jesus' name. First Kings 17 verse 9 to 16. He said, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belonged to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded. Someone say, I have commanded. Say, so I have instructed. Say instruction. Say commandments. Behold, I have commanded a, womb, a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering. When they gathered, was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch for me, I pray thee, a little water. Somebody say little water. Say small commandments. Say small instructions. Say little instructions. I pray thee. First for me, I pray thee a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she, as, and as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. Someone say bigger instructions. Say bigger commandments. Verse 11. And as she was 
Okay, verse 12. And she said, As the Lord li uh, as the Lord thy God liveth, I am not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil. Someone say a little oil. So somebody say a little oil. He says, A little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am guarding two sticks that I may go eat and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. Verse 13. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do. Do someone say fear not. Just keep the instructions. Say fear not. Just do the instructions. Amen. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after, after make for thee and for thy son. For thus said the Lord. Someone say the prophetic blessing. Someone say the, say the harvest of the instruction. For thus said the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste. Neither shall the cruise of oil fail. Somebody say overflow. He said, Until the day that the Lord sent the rain upon the earth. And she went and did. Somebody said she went and did. Somebody said she took to the instructions. Amen. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her and her house did eat many days. Verse 16. And the barrel of meal wasted not. Somebody say overflow. Neither did the cruise of oil fail. Means the oil kept flowing. Amen. Kept increasing. According to the word of the Lord, which is spoke by Elijah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say prophetic instruction. So overflow through prophetic instructions. Today is a Bible study, so I will not be jumping. Hallelujah. I want these things to enter your bone marrow. One of the very important secrets to continually enjoy the overflows of God. Maybe overflow of life. Maybe overflow of joy. Maybe overflow of peace. Maybe overflow of favor. Maybe overflow of prosperity. Maybe overflow of grace. Maybe overflow of, of power. Maybe overflow of anointing. One of the secret keys to access the realms of overflow is to walk in obedience to divine instructions. What are divine instructions? Divine instructions are those things that God has asked you to do. Prophetic instructions are those commands the Lord has released upon your life. Hear me, child of God. Experiencing the overflows of God is not accidental. It's a result to commitment. Commitment in walking in the will of the Spirit. Commitment in walking under the leadership of the Holy Ghost. Commitment in walking by the leadings of the Word. Commitment to walking under prophetic order. Every time your life as a Christian is out of prophetic order, is against prophetic order, you can't experience overflow. Pray the way you want to pray. Fast the way to fast. Do the things you want to do. So long as your, your life is not according to prophetic order, you can't experience overflow. Hear what David said in Psalm 16, verse 11. He says, The lines that they were are falling upon me. Where? Where? In pleasant places. We mean so long as I, I am under the pleasant place, it's not a prayer point for the light to fall upon me. Naturally, it falls upon me. But so long as I displace myself from that order, from that pleasant place, and I'm somewhere, no matter what I do, no matter the prayer I pray, the lines cannot fall. There are many Christians that are not enjoying the blessings of God. Enjoying the overflows of God. Because their life is out of prophetic order. So, it's not every time that your life is under spiritual attack by demons. 
He said, He maketh the table before me in the presence of my enemies. He said, My cup runneth over. Which means, even in the midst of your enemies, your cup, your cup can run over. Means, overflow cannot be affected by the enemy. So, if you are not experiencing overflow as a child of God, check your order. Are you according to prophetic order? Where are you missing it? Only a few Christians take the time to ask God, Where am I missing it? I pray for somebody today. Wherever you are missing it, God will show you that place. And God will give you grace to make up. God will give you grace to fix it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Every instruction of God is to move you forward. You didn't get what I'm saying? Every instruction of God, instruction is for your advancement. Every instruction of God is to make you better. I believe that when Elijah met this woman and said, Woman, go there and bring me the food in your house. This woman would have said, This man is wicked. See that this is the only thing I have, and this man is taking it from me. But the wisdom of God is why the fullness of God is wiser than the wisdom of men. There are times in which God will give you instructions that will not seem good, that will not seem as the, the kind of instruction you will expect. But hear me, every instruction in righteousness is for your advancement. So every time God gives you an instruction, please rather be happy. You think of what I'm saying? Every time God gives you an instruction, please rather be happy because in the achievement of that instruction is the re release of a reward upon your life. Every time you attend to the instructions of God, there is a release of a reward upon your life. So one way to enjoy continuous overflows in destiny, in life, in ministry and career, in marriage and every sphere of life is to continually walk by the instructions of God. By the instructions of God. You hear me? God can give, command you to do a thing even when you think you are not qualified to do it. God can command you to do a thing even when you are not you, you think you are not qualified to do it. God can call, command you to give a thing even when the thing is small in your hands. The woman said, "Sir, this is all I have. I have just a little meal and a little cruise of oil." She called it little. In her eyes, it was little. But that same little thing was the source for her, of, for, of, her, of, her, of her overflow. That same little oil, that same oil she called little, that same meal she called little, was the seed for her overflow. Hear me, child of God. Every time God is giving you an instruction, don't see it as a small instruction. Because that small instruction will determine the overflow that you will experience. God can just tell you that my daughter don't come late to church again. He said, ah, is it not uh, just come on, coming late? Is it not just midweek service? You don't know that that same little, that little thing like that is like the living, that living in the whole lump. That little, that little instruction like that is a determinant for the overflow. This woman said, you know what, sir? This is the little oil I have and I just want to fry this thing, let me and my son in and that. It's little in my eyes, but that same little was the source of overflow. God could just tell you, sir, I need just that 500 francs today. Just 500 francs, which is one dollar. I need it from you. I said, ah, how can I give God one, 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 uh, 500 francs? You don't know the wisdom of God. That same one, 500 francs can be what will open up for billions in your life. I'm talking about a billion that your 100,000 francs will not open. Your 1 million francs will not open. But what? Your 5 francs, which is an obedience to instruction, will open for you. God does not bless us based on the size of what we bring to him. God bless us on our heart in obeying his instructions. We means no matter our response, if as little as it is, so long as we have obeyed him, there's a mighty reward. 
Yeah, be child of God. Never take the instructions of God for granted. Oh, it's just it's just more instruction. Yeah. Never take it for granted. A father can look you as a son and tell my son, don't come late to church again. I mean, speaking by the Spirit of God. He said, ah, is he not just speaking? I mean, not be talking late coming. Uh, don't come late to church. Men, why that little one, two years, they are speaking in general, but to you, is a determinant to your next level. And so long as you don't key to that little instruction, you are kept at that the same level for all through until the day you learn to obey little things. We obey big, big things, but we minimize little obedience. Forgetting to understand that the Bible says, He that is what? Faithful in little things shall be committed bigger things. So what will qualify you to see overflows or bigger things is your loyalty, your obedience to the small one. There are pastors who, who eight members and they are behaving like pastors with one million members. You know what they are saying? God, this is my level. This is my level. And that's some reasons why churches don't grow is God weighs the heart of the shepherd. He come, he can play piano and since the piano is not in church, how can me, a whole Jew, go and sit down playing piano? Men, why the, that opportunity is an instruction that you go and play it. I'll be showing you different channels of prophetic instruction. And one of them I'll show you is opportunity. Please don't undermine instructions. So long as the instruction is divine, so long as the instruction is from God, so long as the instruction is, 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 is prophetic, please don't undermine it. It might be little, but that same small little cruise of oil will be the one that will produce the barrels of oil. Hear me, child of God. You can enjoy overflow through prophetic, taking to prophetic instructions. Hear me? In verse 13 of that first Kings chapter 17, he said, And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. Everything you think that is small, whatever is not enough is a seed. Let this one sink in your heart. Whatever is not enough is what? Whatever is not enough is what? Please talk, hear, hear that very well. Whatever is not enough is what? A what? A seed. Every time there's something in your hands, I'm teaching you how to enjoy overflow. My God, it's possible. It's possible. It's possible. You will enjoy overflow from today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever is not enough in your hand is a seed. It's a seed. Because God knows your needs. Matthew 6 verse 32. He said the Lord knows your, your needs. And in Colossians 2 verse 10. The Bible says we are made complete in Christ Jesus. Who is the head of all principalities and powers. We are made complete. 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 We means if it is not complete. Then it is a seed. Because he knows your needs. Every time something is not complete. It is a seed. When I got my first car, that car disturbed me seriously. Only the way that car disturbed me, I knew that car was a seed. God cannot give me a car that will give me a headache. You think of what I'm saying? God cannot give me a car that will give me a headache. The Bible says, oh, He makes all things good and beautiful. Ecclesiastes 2, verse 14. He makes all things good and beautiful in His own time. He makes all things good and beautiful. But if it is not good and not beautiful, then I need to give it back to Him. You are not getting what I'm saying. I need to give it back to Him. 
and I saw that car. I saw that car some months after, like four months after, I got a good Jeep, a very wonderful Jeep, hardly in the garage. Because I gave back to him that which was not enough. So Elijah spoke to her. He said, Madam, yes, this is your last meal. If you eat this meal, you will die. After eating, you will still die because you need more to eat. But if you give me this meal, there's something in my belly which is called the river of the spirit. I will activate it to begin to flow in your direction. And the oil will not cease. And that's the same principle Jesus applied to the woman at the well in John chapter 4 verse 10 downwards. He said, you know what? The water you will, you will give me to drink. He said, if you drink this water, you will test again. But the water I will give, that is if you will surrender your own water to me. That one that will test again. That one is, that is not enough to quench the test. If you will give up that water for my own water, it will be in you a spring of water. A spring of water so every time whatever is in your hand is not enough push it to him we have to change where we're staying we have to get a bigger place hallelujah our construction will be coming on very soon by god's grace amen our own personal home so i had some money with me I just received some money. And then I needed times times four of that money to pay. And I was asking God, what should I do? And the way we're trained in Winners Chapel, we don't as a son of Dr. Poe Neche and Papa Oyedepo, we don't have this kind of attitude, mentality of poverty, no. So we'll not go to a place lower than where we are we are staying. We'll go to a place better. And that's how you'll be going in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. But what I had in hand, I needed four times more. And yeah, why I was praying and asking, the Lord told me, say that which is your hand, so it to a sister in church. You remember the story? It was painful, but I know his voice. Every time there's an instruction, I begin to jump because there's a testimony coming. Every time you hear the voice of the divine, oh God, give you a prophetic instruction, please begin to celebrate. Thank God. That instruction is the opportunity. When I heard it, I began to rejoice. I came here and I was happy in my heart to drop it in the life of that sister. Have you seen when somebody is giving you something and thank you for receiving it? You are not going to what I'm saying. Have you seen when somebody is sowing money into your life and thanking you for receiving it? For receiving it? Thanking you, say, Oh, thank you for receiving it. Because the person knows it's an instruction. When you see somebody saying, Thank you, it's an instruction. You are an opportunity for that person to go higher. Why I dropped that money some days after, some few days, even Mama was shocked. I had 400,000 francs in my hands. I haven't given that 100,000 francs. Please, I want to pray for you today. May the same grace that have helped me to walk step by step to instruction fall upon you. Fall upon you. That amen is not ready. That amen is not ready. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I was in Banga. Strongly in ministry. When God told me, say my son, close the church. Go to Boya. In the midst of crisis. In the midst of crisis, they just started this crisis. I came in Boya here for some years ago, four years ago, 2018. Close it. In the midst of crisis, and I carried my luggage and I was coming to Boya. The blessings I have enjoyed in Boya for this time, for these four years I've been here, in more than 10 years of ministry, just because what? I took to divine instruction. I decree the next instruction, you will not miss the blessings. You will not miss the blessing. You will not miss the blessing. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hear me? Every time an instruction is released, 
There is a prophetic power to sustain the results of that instruction. This woman by name Elijah spoke unto her. He said, Madam, fear not. Verse 13 and verse 14. He said, For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sent the rain upon the earth. We miss, when you are taking to that instruction, you are not looking by what you are losing. You are looking by the word he has said. And what is the promise? The, the oil shall not fail. As you give me this bread, as you give me this oil, it shall not cease. It will keep on flowing. There will be overflow. That is where your heart is, should be. On the promise. And not your eyes on the seed. Every time your eyes is on what? On the instruction. You, you, will, you, will, you will do it reluctantly or sluggishly. But when your eye is on the promise, or the, the promise that follows that instruction, you will do it swiftly. Did you understand the point? Huh? For example, if Jesus Christ says, I should stop sinning, I should stop drinking alcohol, because if I stop drinking alcohol, it will give me eternal life. What is the promise? I will have what? Eternal life. What is, the, what is the instruction? I should stop alcohol. If I put my eye on stopping the alcohol, it will be difficult to stop it. Huh? But if I rather put my eyes on what? The eternal life part. Huh? Which is the promise not so. I will easily stop alcohol. So every time God gives you an instruction, don't look by the instruction. Look at the result of the instruction. You didn't get what I'm saying. Look at the result of the instruction. God said, my son, you know what? That, that 100,000 you have, that only money you have, I need it. Help that sister to, to do something with it. That, that 2,000 francs you have, bless that, that brother to, to, to go and feed. And that's all you have to feed on. Don't look but on the 2,000, how the 2,000 is, how valuable it is to you. But rather look at the result of the 2,000. And you will obey his instruction easily. I speak to your life and to the, vo in the life of everyone watching me right now. That from this day, you will obey his instructions without stress. Oh, take it to his instructions will be your natural lifestyle. That your amen is not ready. Your amen is still cool. In the name of Jesus. Every time you obey prophetic instruction, there is multiplication and advancement. Can I, be, can, can I, can I tell you something that is a sure fact? God has never given an instruction that is not for the benefit of man. God has never, never, please quote me anywhere, ask anybody that God has used. God has never given any instruction that is not for the benefit of man. Every instruction of God is for your benefit. Every instruction of God is for your benefit. Every instruction of God is for your benefit. Whenever God instructs you on something, please rejoice. It is for your benefit. Even when it is painful, it is for your benefit. Let me quote an example of a painful instruction. God speaks to his son. The office of God the Father speaks to the office of God the Son. He said, now, leave, relinquish yourself of your glory. Go down and become a man, a mortal man, like any other person, without glory. And go die on the cross. And Jesus Christ come, knowing that the office of God, the, Jesus Christ is God the Son, know, knowing that the office of God the Father, in that moment of death will rescue him. And when he goes to the cross, the Father leaves him. You are not getting what I'm saying. The father leaves him. He begins to he begins to cry. Eli, Eli, laba sabatani. Eli, Eli, laba sabatani. Eli, Eli, laba sabatani. Eli, Eli, laba sabatani. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? At that point, the father left him. How can the father leave his own son? Was an instruction. But then. If the father didn't give that uh, if they, and he thought it he was forsaken and painful in death. 
He died and on the third day he rose again. And Paul comes now in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 6 and 7 and 8. He says, we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Then he says, if they knew that crucifying the Son of Man, you think of what I'm saying? Will save mankind, they would not have had. They would have not have had. They would not have had. So you see that the instruction, though painful, was a word, positive instruction. And then at the end, he said, in Hebrews chapter 12, he said, Jesus, verse 2, he said, despise the shame, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despise the shame, and died on the cross, even the dead on the, died on the cross, died, even the dead on the cross, he said, and now he's seated at the right hand of God the Father. So you see that, that instruction qualified him for the glory at the right hand. But then it's the same hymn that was crying, Eli, Eli, Labak Sabatani. So you see, there are times in which the instructions of God will be painful. But then when it is when you keep to that instruction and the result of the instruction begin to manifest, you say, Father, thank you for the instruction. You didn't get what I'm saying. There are sisters that were about getting married to a brother, and then the Lord spoke to them and said, Sister, don't marry this brother. They say, I'm going to marry this man. The Holy Spirit kept going after them. Bring challenges. At the end, they don't marry the man. At the end, they marry another man. Say, hey, thank God. Woo! Thank God that they don't marry that one. This one is the best kind of man I wanted. But at the beginning, the instruction was painful. God will always bring instruction. There's no prophetic outpouring. There's no prophetic release. Re deployment of divine grace and virtue without what the first release of instructions only speak the word make give the command i just saw an angel here give the command my servant sh shall be healed give the instruction may god give you instructions tonight you are not getting what i'm saying and may god give you grace to keep to it i want to conclude with four channels of prophetic instructions Four channels of prophetic instruction. Four channels by which God deploys instructions. God gives instructions. The first way by which God gives... Are you being blessed, somebody? As we are concluding. The first way, way by which God gives instruction is through the, the instrument of the word. The word of God is also an instrument of instruction. In first, in 2 Timothy 3 verse 15... And 16. First, Second Timothy 3, verse 16, 15 and 16. I want to read this scripture with you. The word of God is an instrument of what? An instrument of instruction. So if you want to be instructed in righteousness, one of the things you should use is what? The word of God. Every scripture is an inst instruction. Second Timothy 3, verse 16. 15 and 16, he said, and that from a child, thou hast known the holy scriptures. Someone say holy scriptures. Someone say the word of God. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures or the word of God, which is, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Hear this. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and it is profitable, one, for doctrine, two, for reproof, three, for correction, four, for instruction in righteousness. So we see the four dimensional uh, 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 purpose of the word of God. The, four, the word of God first is for what? For doctrine. Second, for what? Reproof. Third is for what? Correction. And then fourth is for what? Instruction in righteousness. So the word of God instructs you. It tells you on what you should do. What you should do to get what you need. If you, it tells you that if you want to receive, rather give. It's an issue. So if you are in need, what should you do? So when you are in need, should you receive? Oh my God. I hope I have prophetic students here. When you are in need, should you receive? When you, when you are in need, what you should you do? What should you do? You should give. 
How do you know that? The word says so. He said, give and it shall be what? Given to you. So the word of God is an instrument of, of instruction. The second channel of prophetic instruction is what we call the divine eye. Someone say the divine eye. Someone say the divine eye. Look at me. Focus on me now. I see something. If I, I do like this. What am I talking to you? Huh? I'm saying that you should do what? Shift this way, not so. If I come and stand before you, I'm making a thing. Ladies do that thing. That thing that she has done all of this. She has spoken to you without speaking with the mouth. You think what I'm saying? She has spoken to you without speaking with the mouth. The eye of God is an instrument of instruction. You will see that in Psalms 32 verse 8. Divine eye. And I'll be explaining what is the eye of God. The divine eye. Psalms 32 verse 8. It says, Psalms 32 verse 8. This is Bible study. I hope you are learning something. Hallelujah. So the second channel of divine instruction is what we call the divine eye. Someone said the divine eye. God instructs you with his eye. And I will explain to you what is the eye of God in our time. Amen. In Psalm 32 verse 8. He said I will instruct. Someone said instruction. He said I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way. We have already seen the teaching part is the word of God. Not so. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou should go. I will guide thee with my eye. I will guide thee. I will instruct thee. I will guide thee with my eye. I will instruct you in the way you should go. With my eye. With my eye. With my eye. Imagine that if somebody hiding behind the door and you are coming and somebody stand in front and the person is this way. And then the person begin. Will you not understand? Huh? Huh? You will just know that somebody is where? Behind the door. So you, the eye of God is also an instrument of instruction. God can instruct you with his eye. But then the eye of God in the New Testament is not the same as the eye of God in the, in, in the Old Testament. not the same as the eye in the New Testament. You must understand that the Bible says we many in Christ are now what? One body. And the body has many parts. Organs. And one of the organs of the body, very important organ is what? So if this body like this is the church, then this is an eye. And God uses the eye to instruct. Then who is in the church represents this eye? If the whole body represents Christ for the church. The who in the church because there are some people, they are the arm that some people they are the leg, that some people they are the ear, that some people they are the enos. Enos are those who give all trouble in church. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the Bible says, We many in Christ are one, one body. We means there are people in the church that they are one, they are one, the eye. So who is that eye now of the church? Who is that eye? Talk very me every year. Who is that eye? So who are the eyes of God now? The prophet. Celebrate yourself. So one oh lemo see I'm building from Old Testament. I could just come and take tell you that the next channel by which God gives prophetic instructions through the ministry of the prophet. But as this is a Bible study, it was Thursday, I was just got there, it's a it's preaching. But this is a Bible study. I need to take the exegesis from the base. Amen. Amen. So the prophet represents the eyes of God in the church. The eyes of God in the church. Matthew 6 verse 22 and 23. Matthew 6 verse 22 and 23. He said, if a man's eye be single, the whole body will be light. But if the eye be evil, the whole body will be in darkness. So one way to keep you from taking instructions is to keep you in darkness. Because if you are in darkness, and I'm also in darkness, if I say like this, I make like this, will you know what I'm saying you should do? No. So 
God will also use his divine eye or the ministry of the prophet to give instructions. Like the case of this woman here we saw in the text, uh, the, uh, Elijah and the, the widow of Zarephath. Not so. Huh? It was the instruction of God coming through the ministry of our, a prophet. I can be under the anointing, you don't know. And I, I just say that, oh, you, hey, jump. Jump. If you look around, why is the prophet saying I should jump? You're co in, because you are not under discernment. That's why if you are around a prophetic minister, you should always be in a word, in discernment, in a state of discernment, because you can take for granted an instruction that is the lifeline for your next level. I'm very serious. That time the Holy Spirit uh, he has trained me. That time to which the Holy Spirit just tell me, get up, kneel down. And I don't need them. That time to just tell me, smile. And I'll smile. And I don't even know why I'm smiling. Can you smile when you don't know why you are smiling? You should grow to that point where you take prophetic instruction. Where you can smile. You don't know why you are smiling. That is where he becomes Lord over your life. And that's a realm where many Christians have not entered. <laughs> be, be careful the minister of the prophet. A man lost a whole inheritance because he did, he did not take into instru the prophetic instructions. By name, King Saul. A prophet just came. He said, you know what? The Lord has said, go destroy the Philistines and everything in the land. And that's all. He did not emphasize. You know, he was a teacher. A teacher emphasized again and again. Not so. Huh? That's the difference between a prophet and a teacher. Huh? A prophet will just tell, tell it and leave you. A teacher will make sure you he enter you very well before leaving you. But a prophet will just treat on you. Do what you want to do with it. And that has somewhere gave the prophetic instruction. Go destroy the Philistines and everything there. He went there and yet another voice brought some of the spoils of the battle. And that same prophet that came that ordained him king is the same prophet God used to sack him. You are looking at what I'm saying. The same prophet that ordained king, the same prophet God used you to sack him. Which means your next level is could be tied in a prophetic instruction through the mouth of a prophet. Like we just have a burden concerning you. Like I have a message. When we were praying in tongues, say I have a message written here for some two pastors to give them. And this is what the Lord said. He says, your pride will cost you if you don't repent. Clearly, give me their names. Tell them. And after this, I will call them. Your pride will call you. You can take the, you can take the message lightly. And one day you discover that you stretch your hand like that. Anointing is not flowing again. You say, come out, you demon. The demon says, now they talk. The glory had left. Every man who undermines prophetic instruction through the ministry of a prophet, first of all, has not only uh, not only undermined the God who spoke, but also what undermined the office of that prophet. And when you uh, in, in, in undermining the office of a prophet, you have also broken a rank, and so you hinder yourself, you limit yourself in the spirit because you can never go beyond so somebody that you have broken his rank. If I am higher than you in the spirit, if you cross my lane and you break my rank, you will never cross my level. That's the law of the spirit. You cannot. You cannot go beyond a rank that you have broken. Because you will need those in that rank to be among those that will approve you. And when you break their rank, when they, when they, are, they, they are deliberating on your next level or to enter that realm, that when every other elder in the spirit say yes, let permit this young man come to the level, that one will stand against it. I say no. And the truth is that the kingdom cannot be divided and it will stand like that. There must be total agreement. That's 
that's why we obey prophets and we obey spiritual parents and spiritual uh, senior because when you disobey their rank what you just do like that is that you have set yourself up in the council of the elders where one angel will stand to, 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 to where your prayer climb up and one angel bring it to present it before the elders the council of, of elders in Zion that that the 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 the, 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 the angel of the office of the rank you broke you, you broke will also stand with an accusation against you say you are not qualified and that's why you see some people level 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 but at the same level they are broken a rank so God can use a prophet to give uh, uh, guide you to rule his divine eye which is by using the ministry of a prophet be very careful when the prophet. Oh, I talk about prophet, not only be a prophet, it could be a pastor, teacher, but somebody in the office of a father or a pastor, some a shepherd, amen. Amen. A leader, amen. Give you an instruction. Don't don't oh, disobey it. It might disqualify you. And second to the last, God uses the instrument of the witness of the spirit, the channel of the witness of the spirit, or you see or, or instructs us through the person of the Holy Spirit. You see that in Nehemiah 9, verse 20. In Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 20 he said and thou gavest them thy good spirit to instruct them. Thou gavest them thy good spirit. You gave them your good spirit to do what? To instruct them. So one of the ways by which God instructs us is through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The ministry of the Holy Spirit. How does the Holy Spirit instruct you? He instructs you through what we call the witness of the spirit. Someone say the witness of the spirit. Say the leading, say the, the leading of the spirit. Say the inner leading of the Holy Spirit. You see that in Romans 8, verse 14. He said, As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are what? The sons of God. They see in verse 16 it says, The Spirit of God bears witness with our spirit bears witness. Witness means you have a conviction. There are times you wake up we say, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. It's the spirit of God speaking in you. We call that thing that is burning inside you, that burden. We call it what? The witness of? The witness of? The Holy Spirit. And there are people who, they don't only disobey it, they silence it. The spirit will say, he's saying, give it. There's a need. Give it. Give it. God wants you to give it. Give it. They don't only refuse to give it. They, they add on need. I know what can. Now wait. You know what they just did? They just silenced it. And the moment you reach that level, God will never disturb you. You will beg him to ask from you. If the Holy Spirit... God is instructing you to get up every midnight and pray. And around that season, there is a burden in you that get up and pray. Get up and pray. And every day, you disobey it. You disobey it. A time will reach where you will, you will finally kill it. And you will, you will never get that sensation again. And that is the same thing that happened. In, are you learning something? As we round up. That is the same thing that happened in Matthew chapter 26. Jesus came to Peter and the others. He said, could you not watch me for one, for one hour? He went and come, he went, came again and another hour. Three times. And at the third time he came, the Bible said, yeah, I have heavy of sleep. What did he say unto them? What did he say unto them? Before that. He said unto them, sleep on. Have you ever seen that verse? Huh? He said unto the word, You wanted to sleep now? Sleep. I don't need your prayer again. Sleep on. Your prayers are no longer accepted. Your prayers are no longer worthy. He said unto them, Sleep on. Sleep on. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You see it in Matthew 26 verse 45. Matthew 26 verse 45. He said, Then, then come he to his disciples and said unto them, Sleep on now. Take your rest. You wanted to rest. Rest where? Sleep on. Continue to sleep. He has been coming again. Again and again. So also, that's the same thing that happened with the witness of... Are you learning something? 
the Holy Spirit will be telling you, so do this, do this. You'll be having that burden to do it fast, 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 fast. He might beat you three times. And after the third day, you have not fasted. He said, okay, continue to eat. Eat. And the day that you are ready to fast, say, Lord, you are fasting, you are praying, you are fasting and praying, but you are not feeling God. <laughs> you are looking at what I'm saying. You say, give, you are not giving. I need this thing. There's a need in church. Maybe we need to get a carpet in church. We need to get a carpet. We need to help somebody urgently. Please, that money you have, I know that that's all you have. Give it. Give it. Give it. Don't say in the Sunday service. Come Tuesday service. Come on, on Thursday prophetic service. And you still don't give. They'll say, okay, give your money. Then you come on Sunday, you go and add more money on it to come and give. You say, I don't need it again. You give it as a seed, then your problem is to increase. So did I not sow a seed? How can I sow a things and th sow a seed and things are instead going down? You didn't, you didn't, you, be, you didn't obey the instruction where you were needed. I want you to understand about the witness of the spirit, the difference between the, the, the instruction, the other instructions, and the instruction of the uh, uh, spirit is that the instruction of the spirit is gentle. Which means that he, if you are not very loyal to the word of God, you can despise it. You say, My daughter, get up and pray. Get up and pray. Very soft. But it was the voice of the word, of God, the voice of the God the Father said, My daughter, get up and pray. Get up. Get up. But that one is, My daughter, get up and pray. So much that if you are not loyal to the word of God, you, you might always despise that voice. Amen. And lastly, the fourth channel by which God communicates, um, uh, give prophetic instructions, is through opportunities. Luke 17 verse 10. Every opportunity around you is an instruction. We means if you come to church, the first person in church, and you discover that the church is dead, it's already an instruction that you should sweep the church. Do you get what I'm saying? We means if we say that there's a, there's a need in church here, we need to buy a chair here, 100,000 francs. And we call it up, and everybody in church, nobody have that money. And you're the only person who have that amount. Eh? Eh? Means the instruction came to who? To, you know what I'm saying? The instruction came to you. The instruction came to you. The instruction came to you. Every, did you learn sense there? Every what? Every opportunity is what? An instruction. So every time you see a need in the kingdom or something to do in the kingdom, which you have the ability to do, is already what? An instruction that you should have? And you should do it. So when next you hear, you see opportunities. Know that it's an instruction to you. It's an instruction to you. I believe you have learned something today. Amen. You see that in Luke. I said Luke what? Luke 17 verse 10. Jesus Christ said, when you do this thing, don't say we are unprofitable servant. He said, no, it was your duty to do it as a servant. So, <laughs> if you see any need or anything to be done, that you are the one that can do it. So, if you come to church and you look around, you see, if you enter any church and you see a thing you don't like, so long as God has shown you and you can do something, God is indirectly telling you that you should be the one to do it. You enter a church, maybe you see that the curtains are very old. Huh? And the people in the church, they have been there for two years. They don't even know that the curtains are old. And you enter there for your first time. And God is pointing it but to you. And then you have money in your pocket. You know what God is saying? That money, buy that new curtains. Because it, God will not show you if you didn't have a solution for it. You didn't get what I'm saying? A need will not come. I went somewhere. The man of God were praying for a camera. I, deal, I sell cameras. I'm a camera dealer, a, a, a supplier. 
And I was going to sell this camera at around $1,500, which is $750,000. I took the car, I carried it in my office, put in the car, we went to his church. I never knew that it was a prayer of that man of God. Then I went, I said, no, it just came to my mind that it's where maybe I should show him this camera. He might need two cameras because he already have a camera. I never knew that it was, it, there was a need in there for them to have two cameras. I went there to sell it. As I took, he said, let us give Prophet Apostle P. Colin Yang, uh, the microphone to maybe pray for you people. I was like, climb the pulpit like this. The first thing the Holy Ghost said, he said, that camera. And the, uh, the first thing I asked myself is, why did I bring the camera? Why did I bring the camera? So God was carrying, putting my burden that you carry there because it was needed there. So anything you are carrying to place it that is needed, you are sent there to go and hand it. <laughs> but the truth is, when you hand it, it will come better. It will come better. When I handed it some days after, God blessed me with 500 and something thousand. Blessings kept coming. It is there another one came. More than which is more than the camera. So please, I pray for you. Please, maybe your feet are you been blessed today. I pray for you. Grace to